Emma Blue, short story two. We might as well all be strangers by Emmy Kerr. It was Christmas, said my grandmother, and I went from the boarding school to, in Switzerland with my roommate to her home in Germany. She was afraid that it would not be grand enough for me there, that because my family lived in New York, that it would simply seem too modest. And she kept saying, we live very simply. And she kept saying, excuse me, except for my uncle Carl, who pays my tuition, we are not that rich. I told her, no, no, this is thrilling to me. And I meant it. Everywhere there was Christmas, wreaths of tannenbaum hung, the Christmas markets were still open in little towns we passed through. Every house had its Christ balm, a tall evergreen with a star on top. I was not then a religious Jew. I was a child from a family that did not believe in religion. And what I felt was envy and joy at the activity. The Christmas card landscape, snow falling, snow rising from chimneys, and villagers rushing through the streets with gift wrapped packages and the music of Christmas. Then we saw the signs outside her village Juden unterwünscht, Jews not welcome, and, another, and other smaller signs saying things in German like kinky hair and hooked nose is not wanted here, and worse, some so vile I can't say them to you. These have nothing to do with us, said Ing. She said, uh, these are just political, to do with the new Chancellor Hitler. Pay no attention, Ruth. I did not really think, even of myself as a Jew, and while I was shocked, I did not take it personally. Since I was from America, we even had our own Christmas tree when I was a tiny child. Now I was your age, Allison, sixteen. Her parents rushed out to greet us and welcome us. Inside there was candlelight and mistletoe and wonderful smells of food cooking, and we were hungry after the long trip. The house was filled with the family, the little children dressed up, everyone dressed up and joyous. We sat around a huge table, and wine was served to the adults, and Ing's mother said we could have a half a glass ourselves. We felt so grown up. We sipped the wine and Christmas carols played over the radio, but there was so much talk. It was like a thin sound of the season with in front of us on the tablecloth, best china, crystal glasses. I thought, what does she mean? She lives modestly. There were servants and it looked like a little house from the outside only. Inside it looked like a uh, it was big and lively, with presents under the tree we would open later. I was so impressed and delighted to be included. Then a maid appeared, and in a sharp voice said, Frau Cantor, there is something I must say. Ing's mother looked annoyed. What is, what is it? Then this thin woman in her crisp white uniform with the black apron said, I cannot serve the food. I do not hand food to a man, woman, or child. Her eyes on me suddenly of Jewish blood ever again. My mother, my grandmother paused and shook her head. I asked, what happened then? Then, my grandfather, my grandmother said, we carried our plates into the kitchen and served ourselves, all except for Ing's uncle Carl, who left because he had not known until that moment that I was Ing's Jewish friend from her school. I never heard that you were there when all that was going on, Grandma. It was my one and only time in Germany, she said, so you don't have to tell me what it feels like to be an outsider. You don't have to tell me about prejudice. But, Allison, I thank you for telling me about yourself. I'm proud you told me first. A week later, my mother said, Why do you want to announce it, Allison? Is that all you're going to say? No, that's first. First, I'm going to say, there was no need to announce it. You think I don't know what's going on with you and Laura? I don't need eyes in the back of my head to figure that out. 
but it makes you uncomfortable to hear it from me. Is that it? I can't do anything about it, can I? I see every I see it every time you bring her here. I would like to believe it's a stage you're going through. But from what I've read and heard, it isn't. No, it isn't. I can kiss grandchildren goodbye, I guess, if you persist with this choice. Mom, it's not a choice. Was it a choice when you fell in love with Dad? Most definitely. I chose him. What I mean is, you didn't choose him over a woman. I would never choose a woman, Allison. Never. Life is family. Or I used to think it was. Before this. What I mean is, there were only males you were attracted to. Absolutely. Where you got this, it wasn't from me. So, what if the world was different, and men loved men, and women loved women, but you were still you? What would you do? My mother shrugged. Find another world, I guess. So that's what I did. I found another world. Good, fine. You have your world, and I have mine. Mine happens to be the real world, but never mind. You always went your own way. Then she sighed and said, I'm only glad your father's not alive to hear his favorite daughter tell him she's gay. I was his only daughter, mother. All the more reason. We dreamed of the day you'd give us grandchildren. That's still an option. I may bring a, a grandchild to you one day. Don't. Don't? Not if it's one of those test tube artificial insemination children. I'm talking about a real child, a child of our blood, with a mother and a father. I don't care to have one of those kids I see on Donahue who is made with a turkey baster or some other damn thing. Allison, what you've gotten yourself involved in is not just a matter of me saying, oh, so you're gay, fine, and then life goes on. What have you gotten, what you've gotten yourself interest, involved in is serious. That's why I'm telling you about it. That's not why you're telling me about it. Why am I telling you about it? You want me to say it's okay with me. You gays want the whole world to say it's okay to be gay. And it isn't. No, it is not, okay? I've said how I feel. You are what you are, okay? It's just not okay with me what you are. So where do we go from here? I'll tell you where not to go. Don't go to the neighbors, and don't go to my friends, and don't go to your grandmother. What do you think grandmother would say? When she stopped weeping? You think she'd weep? Allison, my mother said, it would kill your grandmother. You think grandma wouldn't understand? I know grandmother wouldn't understand. What is to understand? She has this grandchild who will never bring her great-grandchildren. I might bring her some straight from the Donahue show. Very funny, very funny, my mother said. Then she said, Allison, this coming out thing isn't working. You came out to me, all right, I'm your mother, and maybe you had to come out to me. But where your grandmother's concerned, keep quiet. You think she'd want that? I think she doesn't even dream such a thing could come up. She's had enough struggle in life. Back in the old country, there were relatives in the, lost in the Holocaust. Isn't that enough for one woman to suffer in a lifetime? Maybe that would make her more sympathetic. Don't compare gays with Jews. There's no comparison. I'm both. There's prejudice against both, and I didn't choose to be either. If you want to kill an old woman before her time, tell her. I think you have grandmother all wrong. If I have grandmother all wrong, said my mother, then I don't know her, and you don't know me, and we might as well all be strangers. To be continued, I wrote in my diary that night. My grandmother knew. My mother knew. One day my mother would know that my grandmother knew. All coming out stories are a continuing process. Strangers take a long time to come to become acquainted, particularly when they are from the same family.